Yo, homie, Google says North Korea breached the 38th parallel and started the Korean War. Is this true or not? Well, the idea that North Korea or the DPRK started the war is completely untrue. However, they did breach the 38th parallel. But the 38th parallel was a line drawn by U.S. military planners in a National Geographic map, despite the fact that they had no knowledge of Korea's culture or history. So there's this really wonderful book review by Martin Hart Landsberg on the website Monthly Review, which summarizes a book called The Korean War, written by Hugh Dean, who was in Korea at the time it started. Monthly Review also shows how Hugh Dean's narrative differs from the conventional narrative that were fed in the West, mainly arguing that the war began in 1940. 45, not in 1950 when the North breached the 38th parallel, and that this was not a civil war between the North and the South, but it was a U.S. manufactured conflict designed to further their imperialist ambitions in the peninsula. Most Western narratives about the Korean War begin in 1950, but Hugh Dean goes back further, showing us the preconditions that allowed for the war to come about. In 1945, the Korean people had just won a long and arduous struggle against the Japanese colonizers who had brutalized them and exploited them for years. And this is when U.S. troops are first sent to Korea to oversee the surrender of Japan. Because the majority of Korean people wanted an independent and socialist country, the U.S. quickly became allies with the Japanese. Japanese colonial administration as well as reactionary political forces in Korea at the time, no matter how many human rights they abused. However, the U.S. eventually found that they were not able to gain any ground in the northern part of Korea, and this is when they devised the plan to divide the country. And in 1947, the U.S. pressured the U.N. and U.N. member countries to divide Korea in half, asking the U.N. to oversee two separate elections, one for the North and one for the South. The overwhelming majority of Korean people in the North and the South opposed the U.N.'s voting plan. Because of this, people within the UN, including a delegate from India, started to doubt the plan too. At this point, the US threatened and essentially blackmailed India into supporting the plan, and India ended up voting in favor. And Korea was split in half, which left the US with the task of legitimizing some kind of political regime in the South. And they did this by backing Singham Rhee, a fascistic dictator who was trained in Western universities such as Harvard and Princeton. And Rhee used all that money and military support he got from the US to commit some of the worst massacres and human rights abuses of all time. One U.S. official estimates more than 100,000 civilians killed by Rhee's regime in Seoul. But in 1950, many of the communist Korean forces were just getting done helping out with the civil war in China. And when they came back, people in the North and a lot of people in the South were ready to fight. There's still debate as to who shot first, but either way, the North marched through the Korean peninsula and liberated all of the South because no one wanted to fight for the Rhee regime. So the U.S. started carpet bombing Korea, killed an estimated 20% of their population, and has kept them under embargo ever since.